Every year in the United States, 200,000 women will be diagnosed with PCOS. Most women don't know that they have this condition. Most women think that they just have a very special cycle when they don't menstruate every month or they skip a cycle and have a period every six months. A lot of my patients are dismissed by many doctors and told that that is just their normal. And in reality, over years of not having a period, they don't even realize that they're setting themselves up for endometrial cancer. Please pardon the filter, but I thought this was super cool and I wanted to do something a little different and avant-garde and I have to take advantage while this filter is still in place because who knows how long it's going to last. But uh, the purpose of today's video, it's very short and sweet. It talks about PCOS. I wanted to raise awareness of this because it's a condition that I see often in my office. Um, PCOS is short for polycystic ovarian syndrome. It is one of the leading causes of menstrual irregularities in patients. One of the leading causes of infertility, diabetes, endometrial cancer, weight gain, hercetism, you name it. Um, condition oftentimes is very debilitating. It can cause low self-esteem because patients try to exercise and do everything that they can and yet they still can't lose weight. This video shows a patient of mine that I helped her get pregnant. Um, she has type 1 diabetes and also had PCOS. We helped her ovulate by giving her a medication called Clomid. We did an insemination and she was uh, had a successful pregnancy. So um, today we're going to be doing an insemination. Um, most of you probably are not familiar with what that is, but basically whenever a patient is struggling with fertility, one of the things that we can do is we can actually isolate um, a sample of the sperm, like super concentrated, take out all of the bad stuff that we don't want in there, and then they consolidate it into this little guy. Um, I'm going to show you guys later on in the video uh, what an actual sperm sample looks like, but today we're going to be inseminating our patient. Um, the nice thing about an insemination is that it bypasses the really hostile <laughs> vaginal environment. Um, in the vagina there's a lot of enzymes, there's stuff that kind of kills off the sperm. And um, so it makes it so only the best survive, right? So it's kind of like Mother Nature's survival of the fittest. Um, and that's sort of made so that that way we can get the best sperm to make it to the egg. Um, and the insemination catheter that we use, you can see this is like a little, we call it a TB syringe. And what I do is I draw up about three little uh, hashtag marks here of air because when a lot of the sperm kind of gets stuck in here so when I'm pushing it through I'll have a little extra room uh, to make sure that all of the sample goes in there and so now I'm gonna draw up the sample so you guys can see it's and I just leave a tiny bit for our slide we don't need that much and then once we have the sample, you can see it's right here in our little catheter. This is gonna go into the cervix, and then I just gently uh, push the plunger. I always offer uh, uh, push the plunger. I always offer uh, the partners to see if they wanna do it. If they don't wanna do it, then I'll just do it myself. Um, and I'm gonna be just using the speculum so that I can see her cervix. And she just told me that she feels very lubricated. That's actually a really good sign. That's an indicator of ovulation as well. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a look at her cervix, which she definitely has ovulatory um, uh, fluid in here, which is good. And then what I'm gonna do is then I get the little catheter here with the sperm. And I just gently, I'm gonna put this into her cervix. And it's going in very easily. And now I'm going to inject. And out of respect for the patient, I'm not showing this area, but you guys can imagine what's happening down here. Um, injected uh, the sperm into uh, her cervical canal and into her um, uterus. And so we're gonna set a timer. Usually we have the patients lie down 
I usually put them in a little bit of a tilt. That's probably superstition, but I'm hoping that it'll help the sperm right up there. And then the other thing that I do is my patients usually bring the progesterone suppository because I like to support um, the pregnancy with progesterone as well since this was uh, uh, done with uh, medication. And so we want to make sure that she gets adequate um, progesterone. Do you have that suppository with you? Okay. Okay. So this is a progesterone suppository. This is what they look like. And this is a little plunger that we use. It's kind of like putting in a tampon. Uh, just that are going either IVF or um, insemination use this progesterone. It's a compounded formula. It goes placed into the vaginal canal, deep in the vaginal canal. And then uh, usually you use it three times a day. So usually I tell them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay. And we're putting it in our little slide. and get it into you here. <clears throat> I know, right? Yeah. There's the sperm. That's what we want to see. Rapid motion, forward motion. And that looks really good. Today we're doing a follow-up ultrasound for an insemination that I did a couple of weeks ago. My patient had issues with uh, trying to conceive. She had tried for about eight months. On top of that, she has a type 1 diabetes, which makes it a little bit harder for her to ovulate and to conceive. So we ended up doing an insemination and we are going to do an ultrasound today to see if we have a positive heartbeat have it. That's her uh, uterine cavity and you see that little, uh, I'm going to freeze this and show you guys. This right here is a baby and this out here is called the gestational sac um, and then the fluid around here is the amniotic fluid. So we have very good news today and I'm going to show you how we capture the heartbeat in a minute. Very ni nice, strong uh, heartbeat. This is exactly what we want to hear. So I'm gonna, I'm going to pause this and capture the measurement. So this is heart rate. We go from one to the next, and the heartbeat is at 162 beats per minute. That's really, really good. Okay. So usually, the smaller the organism, the faster the heartbeat. So like a bee and a fly, their heartbeats are super fast. As the baby gets a little bit older, the heartbeat will start to slow down. So this is actually a very, very good sign. And typically, once we see a heartbeat, the risk of a miscarriage is less than 5%. So we have, in, and in order for us to do a measurement and figure out how far along we are, we measure, we do what's called the crown rump length. The crown, which is the top of the baby's head, it's right up here. And then the rump, which would be the bottom, <laughs> is right down here. So she's actually measuring out to eight weeks and one day, which is very consistent um, with our uh, insemination date. This is really good. So we've got very, very good news today. And this is very unusual, by the way, guys. We only did one insemination for her, and it, it worked on the first try. It doesn't typically work that, so we got very, very lucky. I've had some patients I've had to do five or six inseminations, and we're very lucky. So congratulations. Perfect.